This is Rob at Higher Power Performance. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to keep my videos as a scientific approach. Um, I get some testing, I get excited and, and not make my videos for a week at a time, so I apologize. Uh, but I left the, you know, my findings off my left video, last video on purpose. Um, I have an 82 Nissan 4x4 pickup, 5 speed, uh, carbureted, it's got a Weber on it. Uh, it has a lift gate on it, so it's a little heavier than normal. Um, what I do, I'm here in, in Portland, Oregon area. Um, you're not allowed to pump your own gas, so I found a guy at a station where I can do it at the same type of time, same temperature, more or less, and he fills it right to the bottom of the filler net just for... Uh, uh, he's interested in technology. You're not supposed to do that here, but uh, he's understanding about it. First run, 100 mile loop. Um, 5.94 gallons to top off as soon as I get back. 16.83 miles per gallon. Um, next run, uh, 100 miles, same loop, same time of day. Uh, 5.1 gallons yields 19.6 uh, miles per gallon. Um, stepped up the cell to just under 2 liters a minute. Uh, I was pulling about 30, 35 amps, which my poor little alternator was screaming. In fact, my voltage dropped down to 12 volts. Um, and my headlights were quite dim. But anyways, it was 4.85 gallons, which is 20.61 miles per gallon. Um, so HHL's working. Stoked. Um, you know, no going in and changing jets, no changing timing. You know, I have a, a fairly heavy foot. Um, you know, same driving style. Uh, trying to take the most scientific as possible. Yes, there's going to be variables, and yes, it's it's going to be off. But um, darn near four miles to the gallon is pretty hard to, um, you know, especially wide open throttle for the first two gears at least. Um, this is in non vacuum state. It's just in the top of the air filter. Uh, zip tied to the to the uh, air cleaner stud right into the primary barrel, a two barrel carburetor. It's right into the primary. It kind of rests on the top of the Venturi. Um, 3 8 hose. Uh, it is my convex convection cooling cell that I showed you all. Um, but the side effect is my EGTs with just HHO, obviously I'm not leaning it out. I haven't done anything to the carburetor, but um, they're very, very close to the same. Um, a little bit lower on the two liters per minute, uh, but it's 50 or 100 degrees on average, I would say. Um, so that kind of proves my one of my theories with you know over leaning. Um, I get very little steam in my cells. Um, the cell when I'm done and I come back, or 100 and the two liters a minute with the higher amperage, it was 140 degrees. One liter a minute, it was 120. Um, and not having vacuum present, um, you know, water boils faster under vacuum. So um, I'm not having a super lot of steam in there. And I have uh, two bubblers to try and get rid of some of that steam also. Um, the Cadillac converter also, uh, which if you know about cats, you know they're reburning fuel that you're not using. Um, going in, it'll be 500 degrees, whatnot. Coming out, 1,000 plus. Um, as soon as I put a liter a minute and throw it in the mix, my cat goes cold. Um, it is no longer a catalytic converter. It has become a muffler. Um, it is the same temperature going in and out. The exhaust is cleaner, smells better. Uh, this 200,000 mile rig at night, and you have a car behind you, you can actually see some of the fumes um, coming out. And a lot of it is oil because, um, you know, I've got it, you know, tuned. You pull my plugs, and, and they're pretty clean and white. Um, so I'm not running fat. Are, are overly rich, but it, you know, with carbureted car, it is going to run somewhat rich. Um, in the two liters a minute, same thing. Cat was cold, but with the two liters a minute, all of those fumes that you're seeing coming out of the pipe are gone. 
um, in the exhaust is is very very clean smelling. Um, you know, I'm not going to go down there and put my face right on it and breathe it, but it uh, you know standing beside the truck and down by the pipe or you know in my shop here, it you don't smell it. Where normally, I mean, you got to turn the exhaust fan on and put a tube out the door. Uh, so exciting, exciting stuff. Um, next step is continue on the Suburban. It doesn't get quite as good a gas mileage and unfortunately my shop is slow right now. Um, you know, initially yes I'm getting better gas mileage but I'm not topping off with the same guy. In fact I'm not feeling it at all. Um, 35 gallon tank for 485 a gallon right, or 385 a gallon right now um, I can't fill that one up um, but you know when I fill it to half a tank you know normally I'll get you know or a quarter tank I'll, I know what my mileage normally is and it does seem higher but it's not a scientific approach I'm not going to give you any numbers um, you know sometimes my wife drives it sometimes I drive it she doesn't have a heavy foot I am a drag racer at heart so I do um, but you know I will will do that and like say the first test will be just HHO then I'll do what all these manufacturers are saying and throw a map at it which a map would be the most beneficial in, in the pre OBD2 it doesn't rely on the O2 nearly as much um, but I will do an EFI also and it'll be in stages and then switch to the mega squirt on the throttle body and then uh, get rid of the manipulators um, and program it in both speed density which operates off of a map sensor and I but I can control at what you know duty cycles at what uh, vacuum um, and then I'll also take it a step further and go to alpha N which on the tuning end especially for a beginner it's not recommended um, you have to program every variable there is no the computer will not try to compensate for anything it's going to do what you've told it to do um, so that can get quite dangerous so uh, if you guys are following me and anybody decides to pick this up use the speed density do not do alpha n unless you're really good at tuning um, you know when I'm tuning twin turbo cars or supercharged cars or whatever you know I have a lot of alpha n experience because a lot of these cars will have too big of cams and they have very poor vacuum signals or uh, you know, math, mass airflow sensor is not uh, reliable enough in the high vibration uh, area, so they rely uh, on the alpha N, and you really have to know what you're doing for that, so please do not attempt that. Um, but the simple fact is it's for testing, and, and I'd like to see what it does, and you guys will see the results. As soon as the Suburban project's done, before I do the Probably before I do the engine swap, I'll do the tune port injection swap first, but um, I'm going to pick up some OBD2 car, a Honda or, you know, a little Nissan or a S10 pickup, something, and attack an OBD2, a personal OBD2. Uh, it will be a five-speed rig, so I don't have to worry about controlling a transmission because I will do a mega squirt on it. Uh, Again, it's federally, you're not supposed to do it. Um, you're supposed to leave the OBD2 in, but I'm in a non-emissions area. And before I sell the vehicle, or if I do, it will be put back to factory. Uh, this is a scientific approach only. So you can't do this to your 96 or newer legally. Um, anyways, I thought that was uh, some pretty exciting news. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Uh, comments, ideas, whatnot, be great. Uh, be safe and have fun.